Aloha, everybody. I know it's uh, we're not in Hawaii. Uh, I'm in California. And uh, for those of you who are watching, I've got Ricola in my mouth, so I don't do a, co a coughing up a storm because it's so bad. I, I, this this month has just really put me down so bad. But anyway, uh, I am so excited to talk to the owner. You're the owner, right, of Green Oaks, Julie? I am the owner. Yeah, I'm the owner. It, I, when when you reached out to me, when Julie reached out to me um, to sponsor our Not Your Typical Psychotherapist Summit in South Florida, and by the way, if you haven't registered yet, the link is on this video. But when she reached out to me, the first thing that I saw was Profit First. They are certified, they've got the training, and they actually uh, utilize that approach to accounting. And for those of you who've been following me, I've been using Mike Michalowicz profit first system for maybe about a couple of years now. And it has really done some wonders to my business. And he has a new book out. And for those of you who know, he will be our keynote speaker at the Not Your Typical Psychotherapist Summit. I cannot wait for you guys to be there, but I want to interview Julie and talk a little bit more about profit first and clockwork. I know that there, there's a lot of yes. great things going. There's so much, right, Julie? So, so go, much to talk about. Um, Go ahead and introduce yourself to us and we'll, we'll get going. Sounds good. So my name is Julie Harris. I'm the owner of Green Oak Accounting. Uh, that's Green Oak like the tree. And we are an accounting firm based in Northern Virginia. We specialize with working with mental health private practice owners all around the U.S. So from coast to coast, north to south, east to west. Um, and we do uh, monthly accounting, payroll, Profit first implementation. We kind of, we do the whole gamut: budgeting, forecasting, anything wow. that's numbers related. We can help with. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a few questions here, and I'm yes. going to be very personal with you. <clears throat> From your perspective, the mental health community as a collective, what's our problem in the area of accounting? Be honest with us. We can handle yeah. it. We've got <laughs> we've got some self soothing skills. So. Give it to fear. us. Fear is the big problem. So uh, there's a little bit of ostrich syndrome going on sometimes where you think, like, if, you, if I don't look at it, it's not really happening. But there's tremendous power in the numbers, and there's so much information there. So if you don't look at it, you can't do anything about it. So what I find is you, often there's a lot of um, fear, insecurity, um, and guilt sometimes, too, about having a practice, making money, charging people to do something that you love to do, but that also comes naturally to you. Um, and that's a, a helping profession. Uh, so all of those things, you know, it's an interesting cocktail uh, because often you're, there's this fear of looking at what's actually going on in Absolutely. your business. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And there Ooh, can be so hurts. much comfort. It, the, the, honestly, the, 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 the action we get most often when we you know clean everything up we present financials to a client we <clears throat> review their financial situation with them is usually uh, comfort because then they finally know and when you know you can either pat yourself on the back or do something about it if there's a if there's a problem but with that knowledge um, you can do something you know a lot of times and you're absolutely you you nailed it <clears throat> a lot of times uh, the mental health profession we're not we're not savvy with numbers. <laughs> We're not savvy with numbers. And you're right about the fear. Sometimes when you run a business, you look at the numbers and you go, oh, shit. <laughs> this emotional response is so real. And it really makes, I love that idea of ostrich in the sand because that's exactly what I went through. And at times I still go through that because, you know, as your business grows, the numbers grow. And then all of these things starts happening. You have to really keep track. You mentioned about the fear aspect of it. Can you tell me a little bit more in detail, the fear base that you're seeing in many of the mental health community out there? Well, so the, the way the fear um, presents itself when, when you're working with an accountant is often Am I doing things right? Like, mm -hmm. Am I normal? Is this uh, normal? Like, are my expenses normal? Is my overhead normal? And am I, if I'm hiring other clinicians, like, is, is my pay scale normal? Will someone want to work for me in this, you know, in that pay scale? So, it, normalizing what's going on, and and we've got that really interesting um, 
position where we've seen you know, under the hood of hundreds of practices. So we can tell you what's normal, what's not, but we can also say, we can show you that these are what our successful clients do. These are what financially successful practices do. These are habits they do. This is how they pay their, their um, clinicians. This is how they structure their, mm. um, you know, their pricing. And so you know, we can help alleviate any of those, those fears. Yeah. So before we move on, this is Julie. She is the owner of Green Oaks Accounting. She does, uh, her company does Profit First. Yes. And I've been talking about this for so long. Profit First has really helped. Um, now, l let me ask you. So have you had clinicians come to you with tons of paper, chaotic, and they go, here, help, help me. How do you how do you normalize that? How do you help us to not feel like a dumbass for, <laughs> for oh not, God. you know what I mean? It, really, I'm speaking from experience. There were times when I, 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 when I first hired my accountant, I was like so ashamed of, you know, all of the, the chaos that was going in my accounts and here and there. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I, I wasn't taught this. How do you help us? Well, first of all, if you have an accountant that's making you feel ashamed, and I don't think that's what you said, but if that's the case, you need to find a new accountant. I love, that's not thank you. what we do, right? Like that, and that's uh, that's not what the situation should be. So, first of all, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We accountants are numbers nerds. We love a good set of messy books. Oh, okay, so like that is my secret. We love that stuff. So don't be ashamed. Like here, we actually really enjoy kind of, I see it like untangling a ball of yarn. You're kind of peeling back the layers and figuring out what exactly happened. And so, and we've seen a lot, right? Chances are whatever you've got, we've seen worse. Um, and so we can figure out what is happening in your business wow. and, and very gently and respectfully say like, Hey, this looks like a hair appointment. Is it possible that you accidentally <laughs> put a, you know, a personal expense in your business, right? Like we're not going to make you like, you can't do that. This is not what's right. Even though like we all know you should keep your business and personal separate, right? But we're going to be gentle with it and then just remind you, like, hey, it really should be on your personal <laughs> account, but no problem. We're going to take care of it, right? We can, we've seen a lot. We can recognize these things and, you know, just, just uh, catch everything up and make it look normal. So if you, if I, if I give you my, <coughs> my, excuse me, my bank account and you see, a lot of Amazon shoes orders in there. <laughs> You'll get an, I'll get an email from you saying, um, you know, you might want to separate that great, great yes. style on your shoes. You might want to kind of put it, put that on the side. Yes, exactly. So, you know, Amazon, Amazon target, you know, Walmart, that's, those are ones where we'll put aside usually and say, you know, here are the Amazon charges. <laughs> Let us know what this is. Right. Or a lot of times we have access to the Amazon accounts. So we can go in like, okay, that was, you know, stuff for the office, you know, office supplies, or we can, we can split that off. Yeah. That is amazing. So for those of you who are watching and want to really streamline your accounting and using the profit first, because you know, there's a lot of vaults with profit first, right? There's the, uh, um, help me out here. Well, so you've got the income account. All the income is going into that one account. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have profit. That's the first one, right? Mm -hmm. The profit account, the tax account, uh, the owner's pay account and use OPEX or operational expenses, your overhead. Got it. Yeah, so so anytime you get paid. Okay. So here's my question to you. Mm -hmm. I get paid randomly, right? We yes. got money coming in all over the place because I've got three different businesses and I separate all that. Um, money's coming in at different times, at different scenarios. You know, how do, how do you remedy that? And I'm saying this because I think I'm going to reach out to you. Okay. And you're going to see how messy my shit is. And I'm going to be, it's just in there. No embarrassment. It's no just embarrassment. It no. You know, I mean, well, so really when you have, you know, when you have the three separate businesses, you should have all those accounts for each business, mm -hmm. right? So each business has its own tax account. Each business has its own uh, profit account, his own, its own OPEX, OPEX account. And that. so, okay. you know, when they, like, Obviously, we know a lot of the, you know, the businesses are probably passed through. So you're personally paying, you know, quarterly estimated taxes. So then you would pull from each of those accounts. 
um, to, you know, to, to pay that. But that's basically what you would do. You'd set it up in its own silo, and then you would be able to take profit and pay from each each account. Um, when so in, and in the book, really, you should be transferring funds. Like all the income comes into the income account, and then you're transferring on the 10th and 25th is what's in the book. Sometimes we offset that, right? Like just depending on schedule. We've had some clients where you know, cash flow doesn't allow that. There's not enough of a buffer on the front end to be able to do that. So we do it every week for a little while, right? Like there's ways around oh. around that to get to like until we get to a point where there's enough of a buffer that you can make it two weeks without transferring money in. Um, but you just wait, like you do it based on the, the bank balance of that income account. And Amazing. then you transfer the percentages. Okay, good. So I'm kind of on the right track. Okay, where that's Every good single week, well, wait until I send you my, my stuff. Okay? <laughs> we're not we're not on there. Okay. So I, I do mine every week. So okay. money's coming in within that week, right? Money's coming in that week. At the end of the week, then I separate split. into those split into those accounts but you're you're saying that usually you do this twice a week bi bi-weekly correct or every if, two weeks every two weeks when when there's enough buffer in the front end is that correct that's correct and i think that's one of the errors that that we see the most um when people come to us and say i've tried to implement profit first myself and it's not working what what's going on a lot of times the answer is you know, there's no cash in that OPEX account when you first start and you can't pay anything if there's no cash in it. So we kind of need a, a buffer on the front to make it through that first period without having to borrow from the income account uh, ahead of time. Wow. Where does, so I have a SEP IRA, I've got a 401k that right off the bat, my group practice, in my group practice, it, it takes it off of my paycheck, right? Okay. But my set by right is a little bit different. And I, I put into it um, every month. Okay. Uh, where, where do retirement, where do all that stuff fall in? So I would put retirement with owner's compensation, owner's pay. That's where I would put it because technically, you know, for tax purposes, it is a, an expense of the business. But ultimately, it really is part of your compensation package, right? You as the owner. Wow. So you're reducing the tax burden, but it is part of your compensation. Because if you weren't doing that, you would be paying taxes on that. And that would then become, you know, retained earnings or owner's distribution, owner's draw, depending on the entity. So that that's where I would, that's where I would take it from. That's amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. I have to make some switch. Now I'm really going to give you guys a phone call. <laughs> this is so bad. So again, you've seen a lot of clinicians with no buffer or mm -hmm. really small buffer in the front end. And then you really help them to adjust on a weekly basis. Okay, this is what you can handle for now. Let's just start with this for a, a couple weeks or for one week or whatever. And then let's, let's move to every other week and taking out, uh, right. uh, it, separate them in those vaults. Right, doing the, the baby steps. So I'll give you an example. Like, let's say you're, you're, you're starting Right now it's the, the 21st and your rent is probably due on the 1st. Let's say you're starting profit first today and your rent is 2,500, but there's 1,800 in the OPEX account. You can't succeed. You can't win in that situation. Your rent is due no matter what. And there's, we know there's not enough money. So, so we can help you figure out how much needs to be in there for you to start so that you're going to be like, you know, running on fumes by the time you do that next transfer, but like that you're going to make it. Um, and so, you know, sometimes that does mean doing transfers a little bit more often, but sometimes that means like waiting a couple of weeks before you start to make sure you have enough, enough of a buffer to start. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is just amazing. So for those of you who are just tuning in, please click on Green Oaks Accounting website, reach out to them and they will save your life. I mean, I'm being very dramatic, but I know yeah, how it a feels, little bit. <laughs> right? But the thing is, when you're running a business, there's a money energy and money flow. And whether we like it or not, money in our account really draws energy uh, from us. It either gives us energy to go through our day or depletes us from the energy. And so having everything in line is, is absolutely phenomenal. Let's move on to clockwork. Okay. Okay. So tell me a little bit about how um, your your firm, your accounting firm, uh, uh, cat, uh, integrates 
this idea of clockwork? Where are you with this? Yeah, so we've been in clockwork um, for maybe 18 months now. And it's an amazing program as far as like figuring out what your place in the business. So the whole premise is that your business can run like clockwork without you. Mm -hmm. Um, And really the point is that it can run like clockwork without any, any one of us. It's not just about the owner and it's not just about um, not having to do anything. I'm not going to sit back and eat, uh, you know, eat candies and watch soap operas all day. But the point is that like, should something happen, should a medical issue happen, should one of my children need me to be away from the business that not everything doesn't come crashing down around you. And I, I think a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we kind of keep everything on our shoulders or everything lives up here. And you know, if we, if we were unable to work for a while, would the business be able to, to sustain itself? Wow. Um, and for me, I have a team of, of nine. And so part of that is should, you know, should I need to step away for whatever reason, I want the livelihood of my entire team to be able to continue. I want the business to be able to continue. It might not be exactly the same, but to continue without me. Um, and so that's why I'm part of the clockwork program. For us, you know, in our accounting world, what that's neat, what that's meant is um, we've developed very clear uh, systems and documentation for everything that we do. Um, so obviously, the person who's responsible for a task is going to be the best at it. But should we need to, you know, if someone is again out sick, emergency, whatever it may be, we can still run payroll for our client. We know where all the things are. Like there's a documented systems. So we know. Uh, who we need to reach out to or where we can get the data and what needs to be done. So through across all of the tasks in our business. So that's been a real real game changer as far as being able to cover for each other if someone's on vacation or just keep that client, um, our responsiveness to the client up that anyone could jump in if they had to. Wow. I, I am just impressed with your program and the way that you guys really help the mental health community to get to a place where everything is in, in line in their business. And it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. And so I think the bottom line is many of the mental health, maybe I'm projecting here, but you know, I, I money was such a, uh, a trauma for me, you know, it, and when, when you reached out, I felt like, wow, there's a lot of people out there to help and you don't have to feel alone because money does isolate you. Mm-hmm. You know, and right now my business, uh, Cat Family Therapy, my group practice is fairly running on its own. And I'm just trying to figure out my place now because I've completely stepped away um, from seeing therapy clients and I'm just overseeing everybody. Uh, but, you know, th- there's there's a lot of things that I want to do in the business to grow it, but at the same time, not to be so much in it at the same mm-hmm. time. Right. So you're saying that you can help us get to that place. Uh, well, <laughs> Clockwork certainly can. We can we can certainly be a support of, of Clockwork because uh, that program has worked really well for us. Yeah. Okay, la- last thing that we want to explore here. So someone um, is watching this video and they're saying, I, I really, really want to do this. What's your onboarding process? What's your process to kind of bring people in? Sure. Well, so our most popular service is monthly accounting services, and that's usually where everyone comes in, right? Um, so whether it's a solo practice or a group practice, that's typically where we start. Um, and then there's a, if you go to our website, there's a couple of different packages, depending on the level of support that you're looking for. Um, and then the onboarding process is really simple. Um, once we have an assigned engagement, we set up a kickoff call, usually within a few days. And on that call, um, that's usually a Zoom, just like this. And we're going to get uh, access to everything we need access to, to be able to make it as really painless as possible. Um, for for the practice owner, right? So we're getting uh, access to QuickBooks, access to, you know, all all the different pieces that we need to be able to do our job. And so that you can just sit back and answer a couple of questions at the end of the month and then get your reports and then have your meeting with us, um, your, you know, your financial strategy meeting to see, to figure out what's going on in the business. And so, yeah, that's something that we include on all levels is either a quarterly or a monthly financial strategy meeting where we're discussing what's going on in your business, but then it's also a great time for us to connect and figure out like what, how can we serve you? What's going on in your business? Like how can we update the forecast, for example? Like, are you adding more space or are you adding clinicians? (laughs) Or what what is a forecast, you know? (laughs) Well, yeah, the financial (laughs) forecast. So we were just doing one a couple of days ago where, you know, clinician is adding or a, a practice owner is adding 
Um, they just did a build out adding two new rooms and a new waiting room. It's like, okay, what does that look like? What's the, what, is, what kind of income is going to come in as a result of that? What kind of staffing are they going to need because of that? So looking at the financial implications uh, of any you know, big decision you're making in the business. That's amazing. And so you're, you're saying that you'll have access to all our bank accounts. Um, and now do, uh, do you do automatic withdrawals in, in all the other vaults or do we do it? How, how does that work out? So when we're doing profit first support, generally, as a, uh, as a general rule, we have view only access in your bank account so we can see all the activity. We can't usually do anything. Um, so typically what we'll do um, with Profit First Support is that we'll have actually a, a 15 or 30 minute meeting scheduled twice a month with a practice owner where we're do, we'll do all the calculations for you on the front end. So you'll get to the meeting, all the calculations are done, we'll review it together, and then we do the transfers right when we're on the call. Um, and then you're done, you can go about your day. So that's just one more of the accountability portion that we found is super helpful for Profit First, um, for, for firms that we support in Profit First, because then you have that built-in check-in of like, okay, what's going on with this credit card? You know, there's not going to be enough to cover this expense. What can we do? Or, you know, so we can shuffle things around to um, make pro Profit First continue to work for the practice. Oh my goodness. So again, get on the dang website guys <laughs> and really um schedule appointment so do they do they have a consultation time with you or how does yes. that work out <clears throat> so if you go to our website there's a there's a, two things that you can do so one you can schedule a free consultation um, with someone from the team that's right on the website there's a big button um that's free to you there's no it's not a sales call we'll just kind of figure out if it makes sense for us to work together um, you can also, if you're not quite ready for that, you can sign up. We have an email that's five days of profit boosting tips for private practice. Um, sign up for that and you get access to a ton of templates on in those five days. Like there's a budget template, um, there's an income statement, like there's all these different, you'll, you'll get a lot of super useful information and then you can decide if you, um, if it makes sense for uh, consultation. I think it makes sense to me. I mean, if, seriously, if, if you are looking for a system that will help help you in the future in, in the health of your business as well. I think this is a really good investment for you. So, and for those of you who haven't registered yet for the Not Your Typical Psychotherapist in South Florida, please do so. You will be meeting a lot of great sponsors there. Julie, thank you so much for all that you do. I mean, sure. literally my, my, my shoulder just got relaxed because you know I've been in the process of money management and Profit First has done really well for me and it's gonna continue. But you know, there's just some areas where I'm kind of like, oh, I gotta fix this. And I think I'm going to reach out to all of you. I would love to. And Ernesto, I think you, you, you've probably experienced this, but the, the relief, that first tax season, and we're just about in there right now, that first tax season where um, you, you have a tax bill as a private practice owner and there's cash, in, plenty of cash to cover it in your tax account, that is such like a, such a happy moment. You're like, yes, we did it. We did it. Um, it's such a relief. Yeah. And people just forget that it's over there and you don't, you know, you don't owe the money anymore, but if there's more, then you even get to take some home Like you get, you, you get to or, give yourself a little bonus. Right. You can go to Vegas and blow that whole thing. You up. could <laughs> buy more shoes. You hey, can get more shoes. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so again, for those of you who are watching, Please visit the Green Oaks website. Sorry for my coughing. But uh, you will meet Julie and her team at the Natural Typical Psychotherapist yes. Summit in South Florida. So please we'll register. Thank you again, Julie. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye.